across the fence, we're coming to you from the Kent Delord House Museum in Plattsburgh. It's a home steeped in history, overlooking the Saranac River as it flows into Plattsburgh Bay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Will Michael. Thank you for choosing Across the Fence. And to begin today's program here in Plattsburgh, I want to welcome and thank our host, Don Wickman. Don, it is a pleasure to be here and oh, a pleasure to be with you. Yes, and it's always a fun to be on Across the Fence, Will, and thank you for crossing the lake and coming to Plattsburgh. Now, folks need to know that you're the director of the Kent Delord House Museum, and with this as our backdrop, tell us a little bit about the home and its occupants. Okay. Uh, the first portion of the home actually dates back to 1790. And then it has been added to over the years, but we really categorize three generations of the Delord family. Henry and Betsy Delord purchased the house in 1810. He added to it two uh, subsequent times to make it pretty much what you see in the front of the house is what he uh, constructed by 1815. Um, and Henry was just a self-made man in this area, uh, very well respected in the village of Plattsburgh at that time. A, a local business person. Yes, but actually not too local because he was born in Nimes, France, yep. uh, and then in the late 1790s moved uh, from France to Haiti uh, to Peru, New York, and then decided that the place to be was the burgeoning village of Plattsburgh. And uh, he really was that self-made man um, selling out of his gardens here. Uh, he had a red store. He did very well, except that he went into bankruptcy because he offered credit to American soldiers during the War of 1812 and was never paid back by the soldiers or the federal government. And the war becomes a, a huge piece of the, of the story and the whole museum, correct? Uh, very correct. Um, during the British invasion in, in September of 1814, um, British Royal Artillery officers were actually quartered here. And they helped to vandalize, well, they didn't probably, but helped to vandalize the place for the second time because it was done also in 1813. Now, one of the things that I personally wanted to ask you is the, the concept of a house museum. And I don't want to misspeak, but it, do those always go together, or is it a house and a museum? Um, in this one, it does go together yeah. because we are really a time capsule yep. here. Um, after Henry and Betsy, Henry died early because of a lot of the stress faced on his bankruptcy and financial situation. Uh, but then his um, his daughter married Henry Livingston Webb, and uh, she was brought up here for um, her and and Henry Livingston wed, actually wed in one of the parlors here at the, church, uh, at the house. And so we have that second generation and we have artifacts from the Webb family here from Connecticut. And their daughter married a Frank Hall and it was upon her death in 1913 that the, um, the Delord family line died out. And basically, I, I use this ca uh, casually, is that the Delords would be today in the 21st century would be almost called hoarders because they didn't throw out a lot of material. Mm -hmm. Which in some ways begs the question, how old is the museum? How, what, when, we, when you walk through and we all this history around us, how old is it? Okay, officially it dates back to 1928. Uh, that was uh, 15 years after uh, Fanny Delord Hall died. And it was, uh, it had been left to her caretaker uh, but there was a Mrs. Jeanette Tuttle, of a regent in the local DAR, that was pushing very hard to have this house become a museum because it was so vitally important. And she worked with William T. Minor, who is responsible for Heart's Delight and the Minor Museum, who was one of the um, creators of the Central uh, Champlain Valley Physicians Hospital. And she convinced him that it was proper for him to invest in the property and he helped bring it up to par. Um, he did first interpret it not as the Delords, but as a colonial revival home. Mm -hmm. But a lot of credit goes to William T. Minor, but the unsung hero is Jeanette Tuttle. Now, as a, as a longtime historian, now the director here at Kent Delord, what do you describe when people say what's special? And you say? Wow. <laughs> That's a good word for it as well, because um, it's a, like I said before, it's a time capsule. We have portraits here that go back to the webs from uh, the 1770s, and then we have most of the Delord family in portraits also. Uh, 
when the British evacuated here after the the battles of Plattsburgh on September 11th, uh, the artillery company left behind a mess chest. And it's one of the most important artifacts left here. We got the family silver on display. Um, and that's like what I, I said earlier, some of the military history. Uh, right. Again, wow, fascinating right. because there, there isn't, it's almost like there isn't one piece. There is not one piece that defines something. It's, it's, there's so much. Right. We are layers of history yeah. here from uh, 1810 to 1913. Uh, it's a wonderful collection that represents the history of Plattsburgh. And the three generations of the, the Delord, Webbs, and Halls were very giving people also. They were a very big part of the community which is something that we also try to talk about is the uh, sharing of their time and yeah. giving back to the community. Don, are there other, uh, I know there are, uh, special exhibitions, events, other pieces that, that people can see that you want to share with our viewers today? Um, what we do is, uh, we're playing up more for this year, is uh, some of the bicentennial for the War of 1812, uh, but we're going to be constantly changing exhibits. We create a new room that's going to be revolving all the time. And I have to say that there's so much material here. We have an endless array of stories that we can tell through the family and the house. And there is, as we've said, so much to learn. So how, when can people access the House Museum? Okay. House is open from May 1st through uh, the weekend after Columbus Day. And it's open uh, Tuesday through Saturdays, 12 to 4. And we also want to point out uh, for more information on some of those special events, exhibits, activities here at Kent Delord, you can visit the website, kentdelordhouse.org. Again, that's kentdelordhouse.org, or you can call 518 561 1035. Don, I can't thank you enough for invite, inviting us here today. We're not done yet, so it's just been wonderful to visit with you and learn more about the story of the Kent Delord House well, Museum. It's always good to see you, Will, and it's fun to explain what this icon is that Plattsburgh has right on this location. Well, as you know, and our viewers are about to find out, the Kent Delord House isn't just a house, it's also gardens. The Delords literally love to garden, and so now we're going to join UVM Extension horticulturist Leonard Perry for the rest of the story here in Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh. Leonard? Well, thank you, Will. With so many historic homes in the region, I think it's very exciting to be here today at the Kent Delord House Museum Gardens to take a look at a recreation, lovely recreation of some gardens of various periods. With me today is Donna Bell to explain what's going on here. Thank you so much, Donna, for being here. Thank you for being here. Now, what is your role here in these lovely gardens? I'm a gardener. I'm one of the charter members of the Garden Club, and we've been here since 1986, I think it is, that we chartered. And that's a garden club specifically for this house it, museum? It's only for this. And our name is the Kent Delord House Museum Garden Club. The, the whole, that's our name. And we can't be in the Garden Club unless we are members of the museum first. So we, we just are here, and we do only the gardens at the museum. You can see the work that we do. We have 47 members wow. and everybody works at least two hours a summer pulling weeds. That doesn't count a monthly. Everybody come and work all together. It doesn't count the fence maintenance. We put hours and hours into the grounds because our goal, and it'll take us a while, we've, we've started, but our goal is to make the outside as historically relevant to our family, our community, the time periods as the inside, which is perfect. It's in all the day books. We know that's accurate. We want the outside to be as accurate. So you've really done your research oh, and for sure. you we, know what they had here and the types of plants, the perennials from the various periods. We started that initially when we first chartered and a couple of the girls went to the National Historic Preservation Symposium where Right off the bat, we knew that we had to keep this authentic, and they started right there. And later we hired a professional, Cindy Brockway, who spent time here and did research with the, with the dirt, with the ground, trying to determine what exactly had been planted there and what was going on here and where was what. And we have followed her directions and done many of those things too. And it'll take us the rest of our lifetimes to catch up. Oh, to one what of the they, most stunning things is the, are these obelisks with the clematis. I guess those are period and yes. both the structures and the, and the vines. The structure is called a tutur. 
Okay. Uh, it's a French <laughs> word. Appropriate for the French history. It's French <laughs> because it was a French lieutenant that designed the configuration of our front gardens. He did this, he was a friend of Henry Delord's and designed it. So he would have had two tours here. And one of our uh, former board members and the husband of uh, one of our garden club members made some and they we used them for years these had to be purchased we ran we just they wore out and the clematis are just gorgeous this year well, and see this both lovely, sides uh, of the uh, front yard daylilies are going to be coming into bloom soon and a lovely and pretty fence i know you've really spent some time on and effort on that can you tell us about the fence we do fence maintenance the garden club comes in You'll see on the other side of the fence, you'll see blue tarps under there. You think, what is that? It's because two people will come with bleach mm. and brushes and scrub brushes, wow. and they clean one section a week of that fence, both sides, and hoses. Amazing. And they have to put tarp under there because we have put this fine gravel around everywhere, not like in Henry Delord's day when it would have been your broken dishes and your rags mm. to keep the weeds down. We put in gravel. It's more uh, pleasing today to have that than junk here. So I notice a plaque down here and you have the red, white, and blue theme going with the annual flowers. Um, this is a, a peace garden. I understand it's a new designation. This is new. We are part of the International Peace Garden Tour. It is Eastern Canada and Northeastern New York and it's based on the War of 1812. It, it, they have chosen gardens, places where there were terrible war stories. And this is the people's way to make up for the war. And they now have bus tours that do this. Uh, it is put out by the International Peace Garden Foundation or something like that. And it started last year. We have this plaque that's embedded in our garden that they gave us. And we also have another one out by the driveway uh, by our regular Kent Delord sign that they gave us. We only have about a minute left. I just wanted to mention um, some of the other gardens on the sides you have. Uh, on the uh, east side, I guess, is a Victorian garden you were talking Right, about? that is the Victorian garden. And in the Victorian garden, right out Fanny's bedroom window, today, exactly a white rose is blooming. And in her day book, she talks about the white rose outside her bedroom window. So that's she very authentic for She was the last inhabitant period. of this home. And, that, and it is the white rose. Um, what do you call the... For the period. It the, is the, the rose for the rose. period, yes. And out back I noticed um, a arbor, it looked like with grapes on yes. it. Yes. When we hired Cindy Brockway to help us restore and, and put it back together, she said there was a grape arbor there and we had pictures. So we have planted Isabella grapes. We're waiting to get enough to make wine. Right now we can only and do I know jelly. on the side there you also um, don't have gardens, but I understand you've kept and they had a vegetable garden there, but you've kept it open just because you've recreated the paths, but you've kept it open because right. You have reenactors there and they need the space right. for that. Well, thank you, Leonard, and our thanks to Don Wickman and the rest of the staff here at the Kent Delord House Museum in Plattsburgh. For more information, we encourage you to visit the website www.kentdelordhouse.org. The website has directions, hours of operation, and a full listing of the many special events that take place here, including the Secret Garden Tour coming up Saturday, July 12th. You may also call for more information. The number is 518-561. 1035. And that's our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.